Bonjour tout le monde. C'est fantastique d'être ici avec vous. Sorry, I will not switch to English. So hi, it's, it's me, the, the geeky guy that uh, happily wants the world to experiment with human augmentation technology. I'm going to uh, start closer to home. Do you, what is your morning routine like, guys? If it's a little bit similar to mine, a section of the morning is when I stand in front of the door before I go out and you check. Do I have all the gear with me? The phone, the keys, the wallet, the watch, the wearables, the chargers, and yada, the yada. All that junk, right? So my vision is that what if we could make this a little bit easier in the digital age? So here on the screen you see some current what we call identification technologies, keys. We identify ourselves to get access to a building. All the swipe cards, the plastic cards we have in our wallets. So what I have done to try to make my life uh, and my interaction with all these things around me, the doors, the, the libraries, the gyms, a little bit easier is that I have put a little chip implant in my hand, uh, NFC, a near field communication chip. And with this chip, I have replaced not all the junk yet, but quite a lot of it that I now no longer have to carry in my pockets because it sits here. So here, uh, this is a picture of my hand and here you see my gym card. Now when I go to the gym, I just swipe my hand at the readers and the doors open. Uh, it's uh, my business cards I have sitting here. If someone later on wants to swipe my hand, you get my contacts into your phone. Uh, <laughs> There are different keys and locks for cupboards, uh, padlocks that you can also use this NFC touch technology. You can have discounts in a, a, a lot of stores and you can be membership in different places. The badges you see up here, uh, this is what I use to use when I go into my office. Nowadays, I just swipe my hand at the door. Every morning when I come to the office, there's usually someone standing, digging in their handbag or in their pockets and I say, can I help you? And just open up for them. So it has reduced the friction between myself and technology a little bit. And it's not just the daily friction of having to dig through your pockets. The real friction is when you forget these things at home, right? And you have to go back to get your keys or, or your access card. That is, to me, the real uh, pain point. So, and you also see a post-it here. The post-it notice uh, has a pin code and a password on it. Of course, I can also use my implant to unlock my phone instead of typing a pin code and uh, to unlock a computer if it has an NFC reader connected to it. So it is a quite versatile technology, this. Technologically, what does it look like? It's like a little grain of rice, uh, and it's a technology that we have been putting in animals for the last 30 years on an industrial scale. So it's, to say the least, it's very well tested. We know that it's a safe technology for the body. It's a glass casing that is... Uh, biocompatible, and the body just ignores it. It doesn't attack it. It doesn't do anything special with it. Um, and so what's the point with having a chip in the hand? Well, since this technology has been around for quite a few years, why is this suddenly interesting now, in 2016? The answer, in my view, is because the world is very different now from what it was 10 years ago, because of the Internet of Things the explosion of smart devices that are popping up all around us. I mean, we see this forecast. There will be 50 billion devices by 2020. There will be 500 billion connected devices by 2025. I mean, those are forecasts. But we see these smart devices appearing all around us. And what language is the um, Internet of Things speaking? It's not speaking Swedish very well, I can tell you. The Internet of Things speaks currently three main languages. It speaks Wi-Fi, it speaks Bluetooth, and it speaks NFC. This is the language that the Internet of Things is developed to speak. It's designed to speak these languages. And with a little tiny chip in my hand, I get to speak the language of the machines. They don't have to learn Swedish. Uh, it's much simpler that I speak their language, and now I do. Um, you can also do a lot of things with this technology if you're want to build your own devices. Here is, for example, a case where we put a little reader into a soft air gun. And uh, with the chip, you can uh, make the gun locked 
and personalized. So it's only a person carrying a chip implant that can actually use this weapon. Now, fortunately, we live in peaceful countries, you and I, where people don't have this at home, but we know there are places where there, these are more common. Um, we've also designed, my friends in the biohacker community in Sweden, a payment, Bitcoin payment system. So we used to sign payments with chip implants. So there is a growing ecosystem of services as well connected to uh, this interesting technology platform. Uh, we have to talk a little bit about security. I will just be brief, but there are, I mean, this is a quite easy to hack technology, so people should be aware that it has certain limitations. You have to know the strengths and weaknesses. I'll come back to that in a little while. But I also wanted to make a very quick point about, I often get the question, Hannes, I have fingerprints. Why should I get an implant in my hand? We have biometrics, the technology that recognizes faces and voices and uh, fingerprints. Well, to me, there are two huge differences between biometrics and digital technologies like a chip implant. And in a nutshell, they are that uh, biometrics, they are open. You broadcast them in the open. Uh, you can't encrypt them. A chip, a digital technology can always be encrypted. And secondly, your biometrics, they are part of you. And you can't really, if you give them away, you can never take them back. You have them for life. And the same goes if a hacker ever gets a sex to your fingerprints, they will have them for life. But you know, guys, my main message is uh, that technology, you can't really learn about technology by reading about it. And you can't learn about technology just by listening to guys showing PowerPoint slides about it, right? Technology has to be tested. It has to be experienced. It has to be played with. So I'd like to welcome uh, a couple of uh, friends, and we'll go do a little exercise for you. Are you ready? Yep. Come on, guys. Bienvenue. So I have the honor to present uh, Sebastien Urge who is a well-known um, piercer in the French body modification scene. Well, you're not a piercer, you're a body modification artist. And we have Florence. You are the brave volunteer. Yes. And what are we going to do now? To make a chip implant. Right, we are going to do a uh, live implant for you guys. So we're going to do a live little biohacking exercise uh, to show you how uh, this technology works. Brilliant. So, um, so I can comment about the final third dimension of security meanwhile. So there is uh, tracking, hacking, and then there is cloning. And cloning means that you copy an implant that someone has, and then you go home and make your own version with a similar ID number, and you use that to gain access pretending to be that person. That is also quite easy to do for anyone who has the right equipment. But uh, how we deal with this? is pretty similar to the way you deal with, you know, anyone can still steal your keys. So you just have to, uh, to be aware if, if someone is getting close to you. And also you can combine a chip implant with other uh, verification systems. For example, a chip plus pin code, which is what I use to get into my office uh, at weekends, for example. So this technology can, can be used in an ecosystem of verifications, making it a lot more safe and secure. One, two, three. <laughs> Super quick. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> well done. I'm impressed by your coolness. Thank you so much. Ça va? C'est pas trop douloureux? Non, ça saigne pas du tout. Bon, bravo. Merci. Merci, Annette.